Hi everyone, it's Marietta, founder of Immigration Beast. Happy Monday. Today is day one of free life training where I'm going to talk about E2 visa versus EB5 green card. And today I'm going to talk about the advantages of E2 visa. So if you are someone who is thinking to invest, start a business in the United States, definitely this is place to be. This is the training for you. This is going to be three days live training. So if you have any question comments, you can leave them below. Um, today I'm going to talk about advantages. So what is the advantage of E2 visa? Tomorrow I'm going to talk about advantage of EB5. Okay, so stay tuned. Um, tomorrow, same time, I'm going to I'm going to do live another live stream where I'm going to talk about advantages of EB5. So today is about E2. And day three is going to be legal costs. So we're going to cover what are the legal costs, what should you expect, etc. Now, there is also a link that I posted about this video. And this link goes to American Dream Accelerator. This is actually the link. If you want to start this process, you can enroll. You can put your name on the list. Because even though I do these live videos, people still email me and ask me, what are the ne next steps if I want to start this process? The next steps is the link above or below. If you are watching on YouTube, it's going to be below. If you are on Facebook, it's above right now. But if you later watch this video, it's going to be the link is going to be below this video. So the main difference between E2 visa and EB5 is this. E2 is non-immigrant visa. EB5 is a green card, meaning it's immigrant visa. OK, that means you can actually become permanent resident and that means you can become a citizen. E2 visa allows you to enter the country for some time between two to five years, depending how long it's your visa going to be issued for. And then you can extend and then again you can extend, but you're not becoming permanent resident. OK, so later on, if you want to apply for permanent residence, you have to scale the business, grow the business and then apply. And that's going to be either EB2 or EB5, depending on the particular business. But you have to scale and grow the business. Otherwise, there is no clear path to a green card. OK, first thing that's actually first disadvantage. But today I do want to focus mainly on advantages of E2 visa. Right. And these are the advantages. Number one, quick processing time. When you compare E2 with EB5, it's a quick processing time because in a couple of weeks, months, you can get a visa, you can start working, you can start managing your business. With EB5, there is a long time, there is a backlog. It can go up to seven years. Number two, investment with E2 is rather low. Compared to EB5, you can, you can go away, you can get away with 100K, in some cases, less than that. Um, with EB5, it's a minimum, minimum half a million or one million in direct investment. If it's indirect, it's half a million. So big difference. And actually with EB5, it's going to go up. Till September, we have this. The, till September, I can tell you it's half a million, one million. But later, it might go up. There might be an increase. They've been talking about increase for some time. So expect that. Number three, with E2, you have control over your funds. With EB5, you do also have control over your funds if you directly invest, meaning that's the minimum of one million or if it's half a million regional center projects, this is going to be indirect and therefore you don't have necessary control over your funds. With E2, you definitely have control over your funds. So that's, that's obviously big advantages because you, you can definitely control that and you know exactly what to do. There is also less um, strict due diligence when it comes to your funds with E2. With EB5, it's, it's a very detailed due diligence. And um, obviously, in both cases, you have to show that there is a, there is a, your funds are coming from legal source. The next advantage is that with E2, you should expect um, lower legal costs, right? With EB5, because it's more complex, you should expect higher costs. And I will talk about in day three, what are the costs associated, approximate costs associated with E2 and EB5 petitions. So you have a general idea. Next one is that you can bring your family members with you. You can bring your kids with you and pretty much they can work anywhere. Your, your spouse can work anywhere. So it's almost like getting like a, like a permit, like H1B visa. Uh, pretty much your spouse can work anywhere and your kids can go to school. Um, 
This advantage is that if your kids reach uh, age of 21, they need to figure out a different way. Like they either need to go to each F1 under F1 visa status, which is a student visa, or find employer and get under work visa category. The legal cost I already mentioned. Now, when it comes to taxes, with I mean, I'm not a tax advisor, so definitely you have to double check this one. But uh, if you have multiple businesses around the world, you're going to pay taxes. Where is your tax domicile? Okay. Now, with E2 visa, if your tax domicile is outside of the United States, obviously you're not going to be taxed on the world on, on the, uh, on the uh, worldwide income, which is obvious, right? But you still need to double check that with tax advisor because I don't know if you run multiple businesses, what's the situation in your case. Um, on the other hand, if you are obviously under a green card, then um, you have to pay taxes in the United States no matter what because you have a green card, which is the EB-5 category, okay? And I will talk about more how and what to do if you want to get EB-5 tomorrow. So today is about E2. Um, so these are pretty much the advantages of E2. Now, what is the main disadvantage? Like I already mentioned, is that you are getting non-immigrant non visa type. It's not necessarily green card that you're getting. Even though you can extend it, you are getting this visa for two to five years, depending on like, the country where you're from. And you, you can definitely extend the visa, but keep in mind that at some point in the future, you want to take care of your status. So you want to upgrade it to a green card, right? So E2 is not necessarily a green card. So that's why you have to figure out the way on the way. Um, but it's definitely best way to, to move to the US, start this process, etc. Because it's the fastest way if you compare it with, with the... Um, EB-5 process, definitely this way to go. So guys, um, let me review your question. And then so tomorrow I will talk about EB-5 process. So if you are interested, definitely stay tuned tomorrow where I will discuss the EB-5 process and what are the advantages of EB-5. And day three, I'm going to discuss the costs. So what are the costs associated with this process? And uh, yeah, let me check the comments you guys have. Tell us about permanent residence. I will talk about permanent residence EB-5 tomorrow, Deman. Deman, I don't know how I pronounce your name. And by the way, I talk about EB-5, not general permanent residence. This is EB-5 for investors. The minimum is half a million or one million. That is, the, that is how you can get your permanent residency. Okay, let me see. What are the other comments? I just see the comments. I want to go to America. I want to come to America. Advise me. I believe this is what I'm doing right now. I believe that I'm advising you. I believe that this is the way to go. This is, again, for entrepreneurs, people want to move to U.S. Uh, based on investment. They want to start a business. This is not, you know, the general path. If you're asking me about the general path, you can check my other videos. I did a video of five ways how to get a green card to the United States. You can find it on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash immigration biz. And um, this is the path for investors, people who have at least... Um, I, if not half a million, then 100K. If you don't have 100K, then um, definitely, obviously, you can still possibly, in theory, apply for E2, depending on a business, right? Because in order to apply for E2, you have to invest a substantial amount of capital. Uh, in order to determine what's substantial, is based on the business model. So it really depends. You know, there are cases, rare cases, when, when individuals invested less than 50K and they got E2. But that's not a standard, okay? The standard is around 100K and more. Now, if you are able to invest half a million or one million, we're talking EB-5, which, which is a permanent residency, and it's, a, it's an immigrant visa type, right? That's why it's called a green card. Um, somebody asked me yesterday, or I don't know when was it, the comment like, why Spain has only 180, around 200, 
I think two hundred thousand dollars to become a citizen or or resident PR. Um, I don't know. First of all, I'm not. I mean, I'm not the attorney in Spain, <laughs> but this is United States. So if you want to move here, if you want to live here, if you want to become a resident in the United States, you have to pay either half a million or one million, which is still less than, for example, if you want to move to uh, Cyprus. Like I remember I was in Cyprus. If you want to become a citizen of Cyprus, it's still less than that. Um, so, and I think I believe it's even less than Australian PR or Australian citizenship if you want to get a PR in Australia. So think twice. It's still good. It's still pretty low. And uh, like I said, the, the minimum investment, half a million or one million direct, is on till September. So you might want to act fast. But tomorrow I will talk about advantages and disadvantages when it comes to EB5. Because obviously there are longer processing times, you know, you, things that you need to know if you want to apply and get your citizenship through investment. Okay, so I hope it makes sense. Let me see your comments, guys. I want to go to America. Everyone wants to go to America. The question is, what are you willing to do about it? <clears throat> if you want my service, Atif, I want your service for E2. There is a link about this video, emebiz slash accelerator, you can sign up, there's a wait list, you can be part of the accelerator program that I'm working on that I'm going to launch in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and you're going to be notified if you get your name on the list. So if you email me after you watch this video, what's the process, what are the next steps, you're just going to get the link, so don't even bother because the link is the way to go. Um, if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, you have, you have to book a consultation, paid consultation to discuss your needs. You can email the office at immigrationbiz, so office at immigrationbiz.com. Um, now, I'm not going to take more one-on-one -on -one clients for, uh, for E2 visa starting August 1st because I'm going to be focusing on this accelerator program. I will tell you more about the accelerator in upcoming days. So if you want to work with me, if you still want to work with me, you have to book the call with me this week before Thursday and then we can take it from there. Otherwise, you can enroll to Accelerator and we can, we can definitely help you out. The goal in the Accelerator is to take you from idea to actual business and make it happen for you. So check that out. The link is above or below. Mirza, hey, nice to see you, Mirza. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up because I do actually have a consultation scheduled and I'm going to be back tomorrow, same time, and I will talk about EB5, Green Car Permanent Residency Advantages. So stay tuned and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.